What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to start off the channel by <laughs> to, I mean the video Today we're going to start off the video by going to the fabric store uh, There's actually a project that I've been wanting to do And uh, originally I was going to order the fabric online But after looking at it and thinking about it The fabric is $100 a yard And I don't feel like spending that much money If I don't know if the project's going to work So I'd rather just pay, spend a little bit extra get cheaper fabric give it a try and uh, see if i like it and then if it works out then i'll order the actual fabric that i'd like to have on here so the idea of the project was to mix a, a little bit of everything with the interior trim so you guys know that a lot of people do carbon fiber trim or then you have the m performance um the m performance style which is the uh, alcantara on the main trim and then you have the dry carbon on the door handle on the door handles so the plan was or the plan currently, so the plan currently is to um, wrap the door panel, the door handles in the dry carbon, and then um, I'm actually thinking about doing the interior, the center, the center console, the iDrive, where the iDrive is, which is this, and this in a suede-like material. So I'm going to the fabric, I'm going to the fabric store to get the uh, cheaper material so I can give it a try. And if I like it, I'll leave it on there and then just kind of see um, how I feel about it. And then if not, then my other option was to actually get it painted in like a piano black. Because the piano black is actually going to look a lot better with the other plans that I have for the interior. So it's I'm still kind of, I have mixed uh, opinions. So I would like to do at least this, in carbon, like gloss carbon fiber or piano black. If I don't like the uh, the suede material that I'm doing. Um, so if it doesn't work, then I'll probably just wrap it black for now and then in the future I'll end up getting another set of trim and then getting it painted, but I'll fill you guys more into details and um, Let me just go ahead and uh, show you guys If you guys haven't already seen I do have a new carbon fiber spoiler. This is actually uh, from keys motorsports So big shout out to uh, Brian and John for getting me that or think f 30 so um yeah, let me show you guys what I have planned for the channel now. Um, I do have a new place to work. I got my own garage now. I gotta be honest, uh, lately I've been kind of feeling unmotivated because it's been a hassle working on the street or in the parking lot, but uh, we got a spot now, so I gotta get it ready because it's pretty dark. The only thing that sucks about it, so I'll show you guys. <clears throat> So we got a tag on the uh, E36 now, so it's street legal. So there's a lot of things that I want to get fixed on this car, um, but I've already pointed to you guys out. And uh, before I actually start it and uh, continue the video, as you guys can see, the walls are in white, so it's gonna be pretty dark. Even, like I say, even if I get uh, lights, it's still not gonna be as bright as I would like it to. So there's, I order a set of lights off Amazon, but then there's another one that I'm trying to get, which is actually locally. So I'm gonna see how it looks with those Amazon lights first. And then if I need to, then I'll go ahead and I get the other set of lights and kind of try to make it work here. But it's a lot better, it's a, a lot better um, working condition. So I can actually work at night if I have to. I do get off work at five and then I take my dog out, I eat. And then by the time I'm, all that is done, it's like it starts getting dark so that's why you guys haven't really seen a lot of videos because I've just been tied up with things and then on the weekends I've been tied up so we're back now hopefully I can stay more consistent so um, yeah let's go ahead and I head to the fabric store and um, we'll just kind of see how it goes Alright guys, so it's the next day and I wasn't able to find the fabric that I was looking for so I'm gonna have to probably order some online and just kind of see how it looks like whenever I get it. Um, but, so I'm not gonna be able to work on the interior so I decided to finally do the uh, cow ah, 
I finally decided to do the cowl replacement. It's something that I'm sure a lot of us overlook. And it's something so simple, as you guys can see. It's really bad, it's really nasty looking. Um, so over time, this is common with a lot of the uh, BMWs. So over time, the plastic, the rubber actually ends up uh, getting dry and it starts cracking over time. And we, I mean, all of us don't want to be spending all this money on our cars. And then to have like little things like this that, you know, kind of just takes away from the uh, total complete look. So this is just something simple. This is actually a really cheap part. I ordered mine from FCP Euro. This is um, 52, $53, give or take, uh, but it's somewhere around the $50 range. And uh, as you guys can see, it's actual um, BMW made, uh, actual OEM piece. So this is really cheap. Um, there, I've noticed there's some on eBay that can be misleading. Now the only thing is that they sell is you're meant to keep your actual original piece, but you have to cut through uh, the rubber. And then there's another another rubber piece that they gave you that you have to glue on here, which really doesn't make sense because they're selling it for like thirty dollars, I think. So why would you pay thirty dollars to do that? when you can just go ahead and buy a full new replacement piece for like $20 more. So that's what we're going to be doing um, to pretty much finish out the video. I've had this piece for maybe like over, I'd say about two weeks. And I just, I've been kind of tied up doing other things. And as you guys can see, I finally have a garage. Um, I know I mentioned it at the beginning of the video. And with, all my, with the way my schedule has been set up, it just really made it difficult for me to actually record videos like I wanted to and this is a lot more convenient like I can actually take my time and kind of not have to worry about other people here and there and plus the most important thing is you guys don't hear no cars in the background like all my other videos I know it was kind of annoying I hate doing it um, but it was the only thing that, that I could do at the moment and if you guys kind of came to this video because of the title then we'll go ahead and uh, get to work and um, I'll show you guys pretty much how the steps are. Now typically um, I'm able to remove the windshield wipers without having to use any tools. I don't know how this car is but I did get another uh, tool which is like a two, I guess they call it a two claw puller. That's what it is. Um, I actually rented it, rented it from AutoZone and um, once you're done with it you can actually take it back and they don't charge you anything so it's a free rental and um, hopefully we don't have to use it but if it does then I'll show you guys uh, how it works because I haven't really used it so we'll end up learning together so yeah let me go ahead and uh, get the camera set up and we'll get started so we'll go ahead and just move this one out of the way all right so first of all this piece, that piece is gonna have to come off, but we'll, uh, we'll get rid of it later. And um, what you wanna do is, you wanna take these covers off uh, out of the uh, windshield wipers. So there you go, two covers. These to the side. And let's see, I wanna say it's a 14. No, it's not a 14. All right, so. It's a 17 and we're going to go, actually before I do that, before I remove it, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to put tape on the, uh, the actual window. That way so whenever I have to line the windshield wipers back, I can kind of know where they're going to be at. I don't know if uh, if these are the same like the older cars, but on the older cars, you could actually line them up differently. And there's I know there's certain cars that actually only, I think there was one car that I did that only went into one spot, so you really couldn't mess it up. But we're gonna be we're gonna play it safe and we'll go ahead we'll um, mark it where the wipers are right now. All right, we got that. And just in case we mess, uh, misplace the uh, windshield wipers, I'm just gonna mark that as the uh, passenger side. So that's just kind of a mental note. You don't really have to do that. But, you know, just playing it safe. 
And let's go ahead and uh, break these loose. Yeah, so they're not coming out. <clears throat> so this is where this tool comes in. Apparently this is what um, a lot of other people use to get the uh, windshield wipers out. So what this is, it's kind of like a, uh, it's pretty much a claw. And then you're gonna be using this bolt to uh, put pressure onto the actual stud that's in there while it's pulling it out at the same time, if that makes sense. So uh, let me go ahead and like, play around with this and then I'll get a closer view so you guys can see how it actually works. The uh, actual claw thing did not work. I wasn't able to get it to fit. I mean, you guys are more than welcome to give it a try, but I've actually used one of the legs that it came with because it actually came with three. So I decided to just take one of them and that's what I've been doing. I've just kind of been prying at it from each side and it looks like we're actually getting somewhere. So uh, let's see. Wiggle it out. There we go. So we just took a little wiggling around and prying at it, and the uh, wipers out. All right, guys. So I, I found a little trick to getting this one out, which was really easy. I didn't really have to pry much on it, and I wish I would have been recording. So when the wiper was actually on and you obviously you pull on that and it won't come out so the thing what i did well what i did was i pressed on the wiper down and i noticed that it was actually putting it lined up um evenly and then once i had it uh once i had pressure on this side i pried on it right here and the thing came right out so that's something that you guys can actually do so you don't have to be doing the same thing that i was doing over here so don't pay attention to this i believe it should be the same for this side but I won't be able to tell because I already took it out. So sorry guys, I'm not the best at DIYs, but hopefully like, this kind of gives you an idea on what to actually do. All right, so now that the wipers are out, we're gonna be taking out the plastic pieces. And like I said, guys, don't try to roast me. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a professional. We're, all of us are here to learn, right? So we're learning as we go. And I had never actually done this. To be honest, I've never actually removed that many windshield wipers. I think I did two in my whole time that I've been doing uh, working with cars. So yeah, guys, um, it's really simple. Uh, don't pay the dealership. I don't know how much the dealership charges, but get your piece from FCP Euro. The Vader's not sponsored. It's just really cheap and plus it's lifetime warranty. You guys should know how to remove this. And I'm not gonna, Really, I'm not going to show you guys how, but I'll just kind of tell you guys just in case you're not aware of it yet. So, these are like little uh, bolts, plastic bolts that are inside the actual trim. All you got to do is just twist them out. You can usually do it by hand, but some of them, they're a little bit too tight. So, just get like, a, I think it's a uh, 10. Loosen them up and take the uh, covers off. So, we'll go ahead and do that and then uh, I'll continue with the, uh, the rest of the video. All right, so from the looks of it, these are actually, the clips over here are pretty much the same as the ones that we're using a 10 millimeter on, but these are actually, I wanna say maybe like an Allen key, so we'll go ahead and I give that a try. I don't know what size, but we'll just go with whatever we find and whatever fits. Yeah, so, I have no idea what size Allen key this is. It was just big enough to go into the hole. And I'm able to twist the, uh, the pins because you're actually, if you notice, they have, the pin has an arrow and then the actual plastic piece, the trim the, or the cowl has another arrow to where you're supposed to line them up to lock, lock it in place. So what you wanna do is you wanna twist the pins counterclockwise and then that'll kind of move it It'll unlock the, the actual trim, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do uh, all of them. So an update, there is a tab right here that actually ha has to come out. 
see, it'll be dang, look at right there. So the tab that's right there has to come out. And I found it easier for me to get it out by removing this piece that was right here. And I'll show you actually how I did that. So I took a trim tool and you pretty much just, I just stuck it in here in the, in the uh, pin itself and lift up and the, uh, the pin comes out. So you do that for this one, this one, and this one. So it's three of them. And then you can just pull this trim out and then you'll have access to the, uh, the last trim that's holding this piece down. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one and then we should be good to go and the uh, actual cow should be able to come out without an issue. All right guys, so what I did to get the pin out, uh, prying it out was a little bit uh, complicated. Uh, I guess it depends on what kind of trim tools you have. But if you just kind of get a, a trim tool, I guess you can use a flathead screwdriver and you press on it from the bottom end of it and then pull on it at the same time and it'll come right out. So it's a lot easier to remove this. Um, I don't think you really have to if you can kind of get your hands in there and, and kind of play around with it. But I would just remove this. Um, it, honestly, it makes it a lot quicker because I was actually playing with it on that side. I still had the plastic piece on here and it was a little bit difficult kind of getting in there so just remove it as three pins and then um, you can get easy access to it so just put your pin to the side because you are going to need it and let's see here it should come right out oh let's see there is two clips on each side so what you want to do is you want to just pull it back and that'll break it loose on this side. So now I'm gonna just do the same on the other side. All right, so we got the old one out. And let me show you guys how big of a difference this could actually make. All right, so here we have the old one, and then we have the new one. Big difference. This just looks terrible. Look look how fragile it is. It was actually breaking whenever I was taking it out, so... See, it doesn't even take much for it to break. And this, good as new. Fresh new rubber. And remember guys, if you get it from FCP Euro, and it does this again within a couple years, you can just order a new one. And you don't have to pay for it again, so... Not a bad trade off, right? All right guys, so installation is pretty much gonna be the same way that you took it out, but before you actually put it on, you might wanna clean your windshield just in case. I mean, you're really not gonna see it once you put it back on, but why not? It's off and, you know, I'm sure yours isn't that clean, so. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it first and then do the install and I'll show you guys how it looks after.
Alright guys, so looks like everything's good to go. Uh, simple uh, replacement, so if you guys want to do it, I'll leave the link down below to where I ordered the um, the cowl replacement. And um, that's going to do it for today's video guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to do my best to try to upload at least four times this week because I do have a few videos planned. So if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.